global. Um, we make products which are very lowly pr priced uh, and require a global market straight away in order for them to be profitable. I'd say from the, the moment that we click publish and sort of send our, our apps out, we sell in 90 plus markets straight away, which is a fantastic possibility and also brings along a few challenges. Well, the possibilities are that we could never have uh, reached that many people in such a short amount of time, um, which is fantastic. Um, the challenges are how do you sort of keep a uh, marketing communication or just customer communication when your your fans are spread out over all the all over the world um, that is quite difficult because even if our products are sort of skewed to be global they have very little language they have very little text as little as possible um, we still have to talk and have some sort of relationship to the parents and that's where the cultural context comes in so the products themselves work well but then the communication part is a bit more difficult um, our, our bet and our hypothesis has been that play is something which is more of a universal language and that the cultural bias is something that, that enters for children but enters at a later stage and that we think that products that are fun in one end of the world will probably be fun in another end of the world too. It's definitely not necessary to be physically present in all the markets that we're actually selling our products in. If it were so, this would be a completely flawed business. I think that's probably one of the big changes stay in one or two places possibly and then sell to maybe 90, 100 markets after that. Um, well, at the moment we sell in Sweden only, but the idea is to move into lots of other countries, starting with the UK. So potentially our market is really big. So, I mean, we've been internationalising our website at the moment and a big part of internationalization and the tricky part of it is localization if you're selling a product to British people you want them to be able to open their rubbish bin you don't want them to open their trash can you want to um, make it feel like you live next door to them and you're not a big corporate company so um, really I don't really believe in the idea of a global language there are some really good things um, coming out of more closed spaces like China where they develop their own products and they don't use Google, they use, um, I think it's Badoo. It's a sensible business model to take something and go, right, I'll make it except for a Brazilian market because the Brazilians are proud and want to use something just for them. And I think that's a good thing because it's helping us innovate and make the best search engine possible. I think something that's homogenized is something that um, it's a monoculture, monocultures can easily fail and fail to adapt to change. So we want to go into the UK and talk to them as British people and then we want to go into um, Spain and talk to them as Spanish people and we don't want them to adapt to us, we want to adapt to them. Even if that's a difficult task, it's the right thing to do. So actually I'm anti-global language. <laughs> Our market is definitely global. Uh, we have all the world that's interested in doing video editing. When creating a video application, as we have done, language is not an important thing. It should be so easy to use, looking at symbols, so anyone can use it. When we launched this pro product globally, we directly started off with English, and then we uh, added down languages which were more or less the biggest ones in the Western world. I feel that uh, when uh, language in connection to a product is not an important thing, the product should be so general and so easy to understand, look at the symbols, so you can use it regardless of what native language you have. Global. It's, uh, what can you say, it's really, really big. I mean, I work with trippers and traveling, and traveling in itself is global and social, so it's enormous. Uh, we're keeping it really, really simple, and we're doing a really, like, vintage style of it. Uh, and the point is to a lot of web pages are, how can you describe it, really, it's a lot going on. And we want it to be as simple as possible. We're using uh, maps and just simple lines and contrast with colors, so it's going to be easy. We use uh, uh, 
blue, red and white. It's like our signature colors, our mail envelope. It's, it's something uh, uh, that a lot of people associate with travel and also back in the days travel. So when you see our logo, it's, it's, uh, it will be easy to, to connect travel with our, with our brand and our signature. Uh, I would say that our market is uh, global and it usually depends on the service that I'm uh, developing. For example, if I'm building a website or a service with uh, local data from Swedish government agencies, for example, uh, then it will be local uh, in a town. So it, it depends. It's from a small town to uh, a global, fully global market. And, uh, it's quite interesting to see how it spreads across. Uh, for example, I did a service a couple of years ago, Tweet Backup. And in the beginning, it was most US people that were using it. But then something happened and all the way Asian people that use, started to use the service. And it was uh, quite interesting to see. I try to build international services. And uh, as I'm a lone entrepreneur, I try to do services that not that's not uh, really available right now or try to see if there's a missing spot and try to go global as fast as possible. Um, I, I would say that uh, the web design is uh, quite um, interesting to see global. For example, the sign up button is, uh, if you can do conversion very easily with a sign up button because people would recognize the sign up button. And for example, the layout of the first page, landing page, people should recognize. But I would say that um, the color of the web page is, uh, is uh, very much a, a global language. Um, yes, about color. I do a lot of split A-B testing and see how, how people interact with, with the pages depending on different colors. And, and it also depends a little bit on the, for example, if it's government data, the website shouldn't probably be really that much colors. If it's a product about Twitter, there probably should be some birds around there. And uh, I haven't done really that much uh, research into color, but uh, it's the standard stuff like the green or red sign up button, for example, is black and white is also gray and it's quite I think it's quite boring but it's it usually works and uh, green for me it means uh, happiness something positive and uh, it's uh, it's uh, living it's like the green it's uh, grass for example it's happiness it's uh, shadow